Okay, so now it's a good time for us to start talking about how we represent symbolically equations that occur for reactions that, re that occur in aqueous solutions. So we're going to go over again some equations in chemistry. For a good example, I want you to consider the test that you did. This was test number two in AC2, where you were testing for the presence of the chloride ion. And if you look back in your lab journal or at the procedure, you'll recall that you chose sodium chloride as your chloride ion source. So the way that we would typically, in the past, represent this is NaCl aqueous, because it's dissolved in water already. And to that, we added silver nitrate. Silver nitrate has a formula of AgNO3. It's also soluble, so we put aqueous. This is an example of a double replacement reaction. So in a double replacement reaction, essentially the cations swap places and you form two unique compounds, two different compounds. This is not oxidation reduction, so there's no electron exchange, just ions swapping spots. So that means we would have silver chloride and we also form sodium nitrate. Now you can check the solubility of these and you'll find out that sodium nitrate is soluble, AQ. Silver chloride, however, is a solid. So what that means is, when you saw a white precipitate, that white precipitate was really AgCl. Here's some things to consider, though. What really is an accurate way of showing, in essence, what happened? Because if you notice, we represent all of these substances as compounds together, when in reality, we know that's not true. We know that in reality, they are ions, which means that if they're soluble, they're broken apart into their individual discrete ionic units. So if you think about it that way, we could write our reactants like this. Sodium, and all of these will be aqueous, by the way. Chloride, silver ion, and now we've got a polyatomic, the nitrate ion. All of those in green are aqueous, which means they're dissolved in water. And when something's a solid, like what we see here, well, that means it's no longer ionized in solution. So we're going to write it together. It's a solid. And then we'd still have sodium ions. And we'd still have nitrate ions. Now, even though I didn't write aqueous for all the other ionic species, please know that they are aqueous. So if you notice, if you look at this equation in green, this has got some redundancy here. I think we could actually make it a lot simpler and still communicate the overall process because really all we did in this process was we combined two fundamental pieces. All we did was we allowed chloride ions to come in contact with silver ions and they reacted to form something new. Sodium didn't change at all. The sodium ion is the same on the reactant side as it is on the product side. Nitrate didn't change. It's the same on the reactant side as it is over here on the product side. So what you're going to see us write in the future when we deal with aqueous chemistry solutions is an equation called a net ionic equation. A net ionic equation. Sometimes we'll simplify it by writing NIE for net ionic equation. So the net ionic equation shows things like they really would be and it only shows the ions involved in making the precipitate. So our net ionic equation for this example would just be chloride ion, and now I've got more room so I can write AQ, combining with silver ion and making a precipitate of silver chloride. Look at the differences now, because we've got three different ways of as chemists symbolically representing the exact same process. In blue you see what we would call a traditional chemical equation. Or you might call it just a, a regular, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter. In green you see we've got something called a complete ionic equation where we show all the ions involved, even ions that don't change. Coincidentally those ions that don't change, we have a special name for them. They're called spectator ions. So 
So wherever you see these red arrows pointing, those are pointing to spectator ions. Those are ions that really don't change at all. They're there in the solution before, they're there in the solution after. The net ionic equation, which is shown in red, shows those ions that are actually involved in the formation of the precipitate. Hopefully the screencast helps you as you go to work through the analyzing section of AC2. Good luck.